You may have heard that Abington Township now has a coordinated traffic signalization system along Old York Road. We also have such a system along Huntington Pike. You're probably not exactly sure what it means or does, but you might have seen the new larger control boxes at the various intersections and some of the antenna rods sticking up at the intersection poles. These intersections and traffic control boxes associated with them now contain computer trips, chips which can count and keep track of every vehicle entering the intersection queue. These chips monitor every vehicle and every movement made. They record the information and transmit the data back to a server which digitally stores the information in a permanent computer file. So if we're doing a traffic study today, it's really not worth a hill of beans unless you've got to analyze what is called the intersection synchro file. And that word synchro is associated with the word synchronicity, which means events happening simultaneously. So the township is now incorporating this data into our traffic study and analysis. The synchro file needs to be placed in the SIM software uh, so that the digital data can be translated into tabular data that tells the history of the intersection. So in a very real sense, what he had said earlier about, about the township doing traffic study 24-7 is true, uh, and, and that's a result of our synchro data program. Synchro data would look something like this when translated out from the digital format into the tabular format. There's a ton of information there that's useful in making the analysis and determining the change uh, needed to improve an intersection. The township received grants to do the Old York Road and Huntington Pike installations because they're major state roadways. In the long range, what we need to do is to make sure all of our signalized intersections contain the synchro technology system so that we can deploy the traffic study and traffic modeling analysis all the way back through some of our side streets and neighboring intersections to provide solutions to a more comprehensive area of the township forming what we call a synchro network. A typical synchro network would look something like this where not just the central red line which might represent Old York Road in Abington is interconnected but the signals on the side streets in the east-west direction would be uh, timed and coordinated and studied as well. In our noble bridal study, the synchro area ideally would involve something like is pictured here, taking into account the collector rows uh, as shown in our graphic. Another interesting and somewhat recent methodology for conducting traffic studies is something called the time-space continuum diagram. This is something that explored like an Einstein doodling, but it's a great mathematical way to identify how an intersection actually works in real time. Here's an example of a time-space diagram for traffic analysis. This is actually a very interesting one because in the time-space diagrams, the, the flat or straight lines represent actual highway time and highway space that's lost due to a, a particular reason. And this is interesting because in this case, the town was losing traffic space on the roadway uh, due to a display sign that had recently been installed uh, as approved by the, the town's zoning hearing board. And uh, if I remember the study correctly, it, it had the equivalent effect of an additional 50 cars per hour uh, being stacked into the intersection and it was very significant. So the, the engineers were using the time-space diagram to try and adjust the signal, signalization to reaccount and reabsorb that, that lost space and time. My point in the traffic study um, information I'm presenting tonight is that it, it is a very complex subject. Traffic study is now really a science that the township is tapping into and, and using the kinds of data we need to make intelligent decisions for the future. Our traffic studies are basically designed to do three things. One, look at the intersection performance ratings. Two, evaluate a variety of intersection alterations that might improve the level of service. And three, plan and ultimately construct those improvements to make the best performance possible for the future. Going back a little bit to the Noble study, which again, is not yet finished and completely available. 
we have identified the performance levels of the intersections involved in the, with the artery and the collector area I spoke of a little while back. And um, they're adequate, but not ideal. Um, however, we are studying ways to, to make them better and more uh, suited to the conditions that are evolving on the Carter. One of the things that we do uh, with an intersection study is to figure out how it could be changed for that level of service to be improved. And uh, I'll show you a simulation here. We're looking at the intersection of Bader Road and Old York Road right at the Noble train station. That's its current configuration. And I think the sidewalk lines there show it best uh, being offset somewhat. Uh, we're taking a look at how we could reconfigure that um, in an effort to make better uh, move, movement and vehicle movements uh, through that intersection. And this diagram has some strong possibilities of being absorbed uh, into our future projects. Uh, another area I know is of grave concern to uh, the Rydal Meadowbrook Civic Association is Rydal Valley Road and Susquehanna Road intersections as depicted here. It, it's been a, a tough spot uh, to work with over the years and the SIM and the synchro information is providing some new insight to us as to alternatives that would make that a better intersection. Uh, what I'm about to show you is nothing that has been decided upon. It's simply uh, alternatives that are being studied to determine uh, the best possible improvement. But one way to do that would be called continuous flow, where actually uh, the traffic lights would no longer control the intersection, but it would be handled more uh, with a circle formation as depicted here in the graphic. Another thing that, that, that we can do and would be a possible solution would be to totally rearrange the geometry of the intersection uh, to optimize the performance and, and that would be calculated again on those synchro files and SIM technology. Um, and lastly, an additional thing that we can do is we can look at the lane configurations and, and some of the early data is showing that it could be a much improved intersection if there were two uh, forward lanes instead of the left center forward and right hand turning lanes. So again, we've not made any decisions there, um, but we are looking at those kinds of opportunities and possibilities. And again, all that's being done to make sure 10 years from now, uh, we have the best or optimum levels of performance possible. This is uh, how our intersections are being graded, very similar to what you remember from school days where A through F is used, A being outstanding and, and F being a failure. And you'll see in this particular analysis that even after several alterations of possibilities, um, the intersections of uh, Old York and Susquehanna uh, will still remain at E, uh, which is uh, barely passable uh, in terms of performance. So that is an area that uh, someday we'll, we'll need some, some very detailed analysis and probably uh, complete reconfiguration. My presentation this evening was designed to give you a very brief overview on traffic studies. I know Steve has future sessions in mind uh, to pick up on some of these thoughts. Uh, so basically, uh, we can end here this evening. Um, and I, I think based on what Steve is doing, I'll be seeing you down the road a bit uh, no pun intended. But thank you for having me and the Economic Development Committee join you this evening. Uh, it's been our pleasure to be here. Thank you.